I didn't guard my heart that time. I said, eh, ah, that's true. Ah, he's reasonable. Instead of me to immediately rebook what you're saying that, ah, sister, I will not do it because of CS. I want to do it because I want to do it. Because HMO is a good plan. It's a good family skin that you can, your family can enjoy. Even if you are like four or five, you still enjoy the, the, the benefit of it. But, but she said that to me, and I, I did not rebook it. I did not say it. I said, ah, okay, I'll tell my husband about it. And when I got home, when I tell my husband, that's why I also told him that, ah, he said I should do HMO. That in case somebody wants to do CS, if it is not natural birth, oh, you will still do this, you will still do that. I shall keep emphasizing on <laughs> in case you want to do CS. Then I went to her to pay. I paid 40k. The money did not enter the account. The money and she said, Ah, sister, sorry. Go to bank. Go and complain. Go and do this. I carried my big stomach, went to bank to complain. They said they will reverse it very soon. I waited one week, two weeks. I did not see. And my EDD was coming, was getting closer. She now said, ah, sister, you have another 40K, bring it to come and do. But you know that the devil is very, very foolish. I still went back again, paid another 40K. The 40K hung, so I had 80K hanging in the bank. <laughs> I don't know, like, ah, babe, you you not think well like this. Are you sure you want to do this? I said, I'm not doing it again. That was when I, I got angry in the spirit that, ah, uh-uh, ah, uh-uh, ah, the devil has cheated me enough. I'm not doing I will, not, I will not undergo any oppression. I will give birth like the Hebrew woman. I started declaring the word of God that no, I'm not doing. When she came, I said, I'm not doing it again. Don't call me again. I'm not doing it. I don't worry. I will not do CS. I said, I said, I will not do CS in Jesus' name. I will not have cause to pay unnecessary bills in this clinic. I will only save for the normal delivery and I will put to bed safely. When she saw me in the clinic, I said, sister, you are not put to bed. There's still time where you can see. I said, I'm not doing it. Is it by force? <laughs> I, I, I did not Immediately, I, I recognized the adversity because that money hanging, ATK hanging in bank, she was during that money crisis. And you know, the crowd you will meet at the bank anytime you go that period. I, I, I quickly identified the adversity as, no, this is God trying to tell me that your, your safe delivery is not dependent on, on HMO. It's dependent on me. So immediately, I had to tune into the spirit that, eh, no, God forbid. I started praying that I will not do, I will not do CS. I will not allow this, this issue around me overwhelm me. It even happened on my birthday. So I was a bit down. I was not too happy. I was like, ah, ATK, where will I, where will I tell people that I'm doing, I'm doing HMO because of, I don't want to do CS. It will not me, but so I started praying. I immediately identified that as God telling me that, my daughter, your safe delivery is not dependent on HMO. There are many times that things will happen to us and we feel, ah, is that woman that I abused yesterday? No, sometimes God is trying to, to get your attention that come back, this is it. Come back, this is it. And to now conclude the story, I saved for my delivery. I saved that, okay, well, this is the amount, oh, because you were told the amount to save that. At least have this money in your account. So that anytime labor comes, oh, the money is in your account. So I saved. Two weeks delivery, we were broke at home. I said I will not spend that money. <laughs> I will start managing, patching. I said I will not spend it all. Indeed, it can come anytime. Oh, I can go into labor anytime. Oh, it's me to, to save. I mean to eat. I'll be fine. I said no, I'm not eating. <laughs> I will be fine. I will be fine. I will be fine. I kept using faith, applying faith. Whereas it was a faith built on fear, because I was scared that if I spend the money, and then I go into labor, where will I get the money from? See, there are times that we take decision because we don't trust God enough to be the provider. We don't see that side of God. We don't know God experientially enough that it's not just about what I've read in the Bible. No, God can also do it in my life. And God really, he showed me that, you this girl, you know that, you know that I'm your provider, you will know. Nearly I put to bed in less than 30 minutes, the same amount I was saving that I don't want to spend. Somebody sent that exact amount to me that take all baby's gifts. And I've been starving. I said, I don't want to spend the money. <laughs> So there are times that adversity show up because God wants us to see a side of him. He wants us to learn something. It's not every time that our suffering is because one woman in the village is doing us. No. There are times that God is doing it to call our attention. He's trying to make us come closer. There are times that you will not have food at home because God wants you to fast. Maybe you've been eating too much. He wants you to fast. Wait on him so that he can speak to you. He needs your company at that time. I'm, I'm sure I have witness in the house, women in the house. The beginning of the month, you have surplus food. Towards the end, the food will be reducing. <laughs> the times that God will do it, that, oh, the gel, the gel, the two weeks ago is enough. Oh, yeah, come and fast. Because 
he wants that fellowship. He wants you to come, come and learn. Come and hear the burdens of my heart. Come and hear what I have to say at this particular time. That is where knowing God experientially comes in. When you are not just waiting until when one, one person will come and say, Oh yeah, receive it. Receive it. No, you yourself, you already know what you are, what you are going to receive. So even when the pastor said it is a confirmation of what the Lord has told you in the corner of your room. So when somebody is saying, ah, when somebody meets you on the road, all these fake pastors that will meet you on the road and say, I can see that um, death is hovering over your house. You are like, no, I still spoke to God yesterday. He told me I will live long. He told me I have an assignment for him next year. Like, it, this, this will only happen when you have a relationship with God. When you, are, when you have a journey to eternal life. I want to eternal life, knowing God experientially. Not just knowing God, ah, when my pastor said that God is a healer, then God is a healer. When the pastor said that God is a provider, God, no, you can also share the testimony that truly God is the provider. You know, I said, D, because he's the only provider. That your brother that you're always calling, that, ha, hey, brother, do this, send this on to me, and you always send. There will be a time that God himself will make it that you call him, and my brother said that, I don't have money. God purposely closed that door so that you can look up to him. You know, you cannot look at two things at the same time. You're either looking up to God or looking up to man. You will choose one. God purposely closed that door so that you can look up to him, so that you can begin to see him as the author and finisher of your faith. Many things happen to us as Christians, and God is willing to call our attention to knowing him experientially. He is tired of we taking the crumbs. No, we deserve the, the whole loaf of that bread. And I pray that the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. The Lord will help us that whenever we see adversity, we begin to see it as God dealing upon our life. We will not see it as suffering. We will see it as God dealing. God is trying to bring us to a deeper dimension of him. I know that we will not start crying. Ah, ah, I need money. I need healing. No, you begin to see it as, no, God, what are you trying to tell me at this time? I, I cannot be having a headache. What is wrong? I cannot be falling sick. What is wrong? Perhaps God wants you to just stay at home that day. He wants you to study. Stay at home. Don't go anywhere. Study. And know that the only way he can tie you down is to make you feel weak and just stay on your bed. Before you know it, you carry a Bible. Try the day you are reading the Bible. Because he knows that if you are active, before you know you'll be in a Gobo market. You'll be in a jam market. You'll be everywhere. But he knows that, okay, if she's weak, I know she will stay at home. She will study. So there are times adversity comes our way because God wants to call us into a deeper dimension. And there are also times that the devil comes and also tries it. But because when you are a born-again Christian, and you know the dealings of God. You know the way God does his thing. You can easily identify that, no, this is God. This is not God. You can easily identify it and immediately step into action. And the only way you can identify it, you can differentiate and discern that, okay, this is God's move. This is devil's move. Is when you are born again. You cannot be outside there and expect to know what is happening inside. You cannot be so far away from God and expect to know the burdens in the heart of God. It is somebody that stands close to you that can hear your whisper. Versus, he cannot hear me, but if he's close to me and I'm whispering, he will still hear me. That's the same way God wants us to deal with him. He wants us to come so close that we know everything bothering him. God is emotional. He has things that he wants us to do for him. He has things that he wants to do through us. But when we don't pay attention, he's like, when will this daughter or son of mine come? When will he come? It's only for us to come, to come to the knowing of him. That is the only and true and real God. Until we awake to that, to that call, to call for intimacy, call for koinonia, we will just keep believing, we will keep believing, we will not journey into eternal life. I want us to just pray in tongues under our breath where we are seated. Let's just pray in tongues that Lord create a body in me to want to know you, that I will begin to test and hunger for righteousness. I will begin to test and hunger to know you. If you can pray in the Holy Ghost, go ahead and pray in the Holy Ghost. Because even we, we don't know what to pray about. We don't know how to pray. But the Holy Spirit helps us. He helps us and helps us to, to utter those words with groaning that cannot, that, that cannot be uttered. Let's just, let's just go ahead and pray and ask that God, help me to know you. Help me to know you. Create a burden in me that I will know you, that I will know you, that I will know you, Jesus. That I will begin to come into the deeper dimensions of you. That I will come. And as you beckon on me, I will come. I will come. I will come. As you bring this shade of you, I understand it. I am discerning well to know that this is God. This is God. This is God. In Jesus' name, I've prayed. And how do you start this journey?
journey to knowing God. You pray. You pray. You know, until we get to a point where we begin to see prayer as communication, like, okay, I'm not just coming to come and pray that God, give me this, give me that, give me this, give me that, and you are gone. No. God created this prayer as a, as a platform and a venue that, okay, you will come, you will tell me your mind, I will also tell you my mind. Many things happen in the secret place, even in our daily living. There are some things that you can discuss with your spouse in the room, and you cannot discuss in the parlor. That is why there is secret place. That is why there is inner room. So God is always wanting that, okay, when you come to that place, don't be in a haste to go. Stay with me. Pray. I want to answer you. I'm not deaf and dumb. So when you talk to me, I also want to answer you. And it takes diligence. It takes the stillness of the heart for us to be able to stay when praying. That, okay, I have prayed. I am praying. I want God to speak. So that we will not just pray for one hour, two hours, and we are not getting anything. Because all we are praying is, give me this, give me that, give me this, give me that. Okay, God, what will you have me do too? What do you want to do with me? What are you doing in this time and season? What are you doing in the life of so, so, and so? That you begin to now extend prayer to people around you. What are you doing in my mother's life? What are you doing in my father's life? I want to know so that I can also stand in gap and intercede for them. What are you doing in Nigeria? What are you doing in Ogombo? I want to know because God, these things are burdens in the heart of God and he needs men that will also bear them. He needs men that will come to him and ask. He needs men that want to know so that they can begin to walk with him. He needs people that will walk in and let us come to church, receive the blessing and go. Quickly, I want us to open the book of Psalms 103 verse 7. Psalms 103 verse 7. We're running up very soon. Psalms 103 verse 7 says, He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. Moses knew the ways of God. He worked with God. God was able to use him. Use him to the extent that he was able to use his rod. But the Israelites, they were just receiving the blessing. They will receive it today. They will receive the manna. Tomorrow it is this. Tomorrow it is that. And I was right to speak for them to always go back to their vomit. Many Christians just want to keep receiving, receiving, receiving. When do you want to know the way of that God? So that when you are not receiving, you know that, okay, it is God working righteousness in you. When you are not receiving, you know that, okay, this is the dealing of God upon my life at this time. Because this is why we have Christians going back and saying, ah, I have been asking for so, so, and so since he did not give me. Because we, are just, we, we only know how to believe. We don't, we don't want to journey to eternal life. And I pray this thing that the Lord will help us. He will, he, will, he will help us and stir up the body in our heart that will begin to see reasons why we want to walk with God in the name of Jesus. Secondly, we also have to study the word of God. We have to study this word. This word is like God's phone to us, using to communicate. This is this is own WhatsApp. This is God's WhatsApp to us. He wants to talk to us. He wants to open our eyes to see the things there. Because this book was written by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. So if you don't study and wait on the Holy Spirit for interpretation, for, for, for him to bring our life the spirit in it, you will just read him like a book. I know this can happen while praying. Because there's a way prayer changes the brain man. There's a way prayer begins to, to build something in the life of the man that is praying. And I pray this evening that the Lord will help us, that even as we make up our mind to study God's word, to study God's word, the spirit will come alive in the name of Jesus. I said earlier that there are times that God wants us to fast. Everything is not fruitful. You will fast on your own. And you will, not when they call general fasting. You can just say, I want to fast. Today I want to fast. I want to stay in the corner of my room and pray to God. Not because I'm exper- I want to ask for a car. No, but because I want to know God more. There are things that we do just because we want our spouse to see that. I'm caring, you know. There are things we do that I, just, I want my child to know that I love my child. Though. So you go ahead and pay the school fees. Why? You want to prove to that child that I love. So do the same thing with God. Prove to God that I, I want to know you. Okay, if it, is, if it takes me to stay at home, I will stay. If it takes me to abstain from food, I will abstain. So that you know that truly I want to know you. So that you can begin to reveal yourself to me. It's things that we do with fellow humans. So let's begin to, to practice it with God. If it takes attending from food, I will do it. Um, recently, I noticed that I'm watching too much movies. So I said I'm not watching film again. I was not watching film because I'm the only one at home with the baby. So I'll put film. <laughs> I'll use it to keep company. I said, no, I'm not watching film again. So I'm on movie fast. No movie again. <laughs> See, so that you just deliberately do on your own. You take decision and no, I want to do this. Why? Because you want to know God. You want to stay with God. 
you want to know God, you want to stay with God, I want us to rise to our feet this evening and begin to pray and ask God that Lord, help me to know you as my God, not as the God of no, just my personal God, I want to know you as my God, I want to walk with you to the point that I can say you are my God, you can personalize God as your own, Lord I want to journey to know you as my God, I want to journey to know you as my God, because your son has defined eternal life as knowing you experientially, so I want to know you as the only true God I want to know you as the holy real God I want to recognize you, I want to perceive you, I want to know you Jesus, I want to know you as the holy true God. Help me to know you as my God. Help me to know you as my God. Help me to know you as my God. That whatsoever comes my way, I know that it is you. I see that it is you. I'm able to discern and differentiate your move from the move of the things of this world. From the move of the devil, I can differentiate. I can know when you are beckoning on me. I can know when you are calling on me. I can know when you want a, an intimacy. I can know when you want me to wait on you. I can know when you want me to move. I can know when you want me to speak. I can know when you want me to wait. Lord, help me, Lord, to know you. That I will know your heart. I will know the things in your mind. I will know your thoughts for times and season. I will know times and season. I will understand it. I will know what you are saying over my children. I will know what you are saying over my spouse. I will know what you are saying over my home. And even when the devil wants to rise, I already know what I want to say because you have told me. I already know what I, oh, I want to fight the battle because you have instructed me. I want us to pray this evening. Pray the way you can pray it. If it is in tongues, if it is in words, just pray and ask the Lord, help me to know you. 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 The more I know you, the more I want to know you. Jesus, more of you. The more I know you, it's the more I want to know you. Jesus, more of you. The more I know you, it's the more I want to know you, Jesus, more of you. Help me, Lord, to know you. Your son came to die so that I can have this eternal life. His death and resurrection was just to make me know you. Lord, I want to know you. I will not make his death be a waste. I will not make his resurrection be a waste. I will know you. I will journey to eternal life. I will journey to eternal life. I will not just wait and believe in, but I will, I will journey to walking. I will walk with you. I will walk with you. I will walk with you. Lord, I will journey with you. I will journey with you. I will know you. I will know you. When you call me to come, I will come. When you bid on me to come, I will come. I will know when you want me to wait. I will know when you want me to speak. I will understand your dealings over my life. I will understand your dealings over my children. When my children come to me, mommy, they will see me as their prophetess. They will see me as God's mouthpiece. In the name of Jesus, I will know what you are saying in my home by time, by season. I will know what you are saying over our finances. In the name of Jesus, in knowing you, Lord, I will express your wisdom. I will express your wisdom. I will express your zohe in the name of Jesus. Lord, I will know you. Lord, I will know you. I will know you. I will see adversity as a step to knowing you. I will see adversity as a step to knowing you. Lord, I will know you. I will know you, Jesus. Whatever comes my way, I will see it as a step to knowing you. I will not give up on you. I will not give up on you. I will not wait upon man. I will wait on you. I will wait on you. My gaze will be fixed on you, Jesus. My gaze will be fixed on you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, my focus will be on you. I will trust in you. I will walk in you. I will walk with you. I will walk with you. I will journey to eternal life. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I will know you experientially. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name, I will pray. Lord, we ask this evening that you will help us to know you. That we will know you as our God. When adversity comes our way, we will see it as a step to knowing you. We will see it as a means to knowing you. We will journey to eternal life. We stop being baby Christian. We stop believing alone. But we begin to walk with you in the name of Jesus. Open our eyes to see that which you want 
us to see this season in the name of Jesus. Regardless of the economy of Nigeria, we will find joy and peace in you. We will find comfort in you because we know you. Because we know our God who will do exploits in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name I will pray. Amen. Whenever I call you, you're always there. As my source, whenever I'm in need, you will supply my every Whenever I'm broken, you dare to hear. As my healer, O Simiria Tata, Jesus, oh, O Simiria Tata, hey, oh, 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 Disappoint, yes, and people may fail. 